most websites have contact forms. But the problem with these forms is that it just sends emails to an email box. And most people don't have the time to check their email every day. So lots of people have to wait for a reply. But you don't always want to wait too long with a reply when it's a potential client or maybe a mad customer that you really want to reply to. And you can kind of manage it in Elementor itself because Elementor does allow you to save these submissions inside of WordPress. But that's not a really nice experience because first of all you have to log into WordPress to manage your emails. And the second thing is that it only has a read status which just isn't enough for most companies. So now look at this solution. This is an automation. So the moment this form is filled out, a notification pops up in a Slack channel for you or for someone else. It's also saved in a Google Sheet where someone can then change its status and you can decide these statuses yourself or you can send the whole submission to a Trello board where the columns act like the status. And then multiple people can comment and discuss about that specific ticket. So this is truly a great option for many companies managing a lot of contact form submissions. And this is all done for free by combining three different free tools. So I think there's a high chance that many of my clients and probably many of your clients too have an interest in a service like this to manage everything better in their company and to make sure that nothing gets lost in the email because everybody in that Slack channel will also get the notification. So I think this is a new opportunity for web designers to offer this to their clients and a platform that makes this possible and really easy is AutoKit. Uh, before it was called Sure Triggers. I have talked about them before in my uh, Black Friday video, but I never really got the time to dive into it. But automation is becoming more and more popular. So I spent some time the last weeks figuring all of this out and now I can present this to you. And what I like about uh, AutoKit is that it's basically automation made easy. I've also tried some other uh, automation tools and these are great as well, but this is easy. It's very visual as you can already see by the interface. It's made by the company behind the Astra theme, Spectra, Cardflows, uh, SureCard, you may know them. And apparently they already have 100,000 people on their platform. And so this is a great platform to get your feet wet with automation because automation can be overwhelming really quick. And you don't want to dive into a new opportunity when everything is too hard because then you're not going to do anything with it. So that's why I like AutoKit. So let's get started. In this video, I'm going to use Elementor in order to achieve this. Uh, but you can use any kind of form plugins. As long as that form plugin has the webhook functionality, you can basically do the same. But with Elementor, it's really easy. And most of my audience uses Elementor. So we're going to do Elementor here. But just know you can also do this with many other form plugins. So what I have prepared here is just a simple form with a name, an email field, a type. So this has this little drop down right here. And then a text area field. And that's it. Then in actions after submit, I only have set up email. And then in email, just make sure that it's actually an email that you can receive emails on. And this default is all good. Okay. So then you need to make an account on AutoKit. So I have placed a link in the description or you can go to this link, which will then bring you to the homepage. Okay. And as I said, you can get started for free. They give you 250 tasks per month for free, which is great. So let's just quickly walk through it because we need to connect this to our website. So just quickly make an account, sign up. They already tried to upsell you to the pro plan, but you can just say, I want to get started with the free plan. And then you are inside. Uh, let's just confirm my email. All right, my email is verified. And so now I have an AutoKit account, but this is not yet WordPress because AutoKit runs on a separate server. The automation doesn't run on your website, which keeps your website fast. So this means that you can manage things from app.autokit.com, but also from your WordPress dashboard. Okay, so inside of my website, I'm just going to go to plugins and just install the AutoKit plugin. 
and then it says that you need to connect it, obviously. So let's do that. And because I'm already logged in now, it automatically sees this so we can easily make the connection. So now we have it installed. So this, as you can see, looks very similar to this, okay? They're already asking us for a review, but we just started. So we have to create a new automation. It's called Workflow. So let's give it a name. And, and now we can create our first step. So let's click on it and uh, let's simply search for Elementor. And there you go, Elementor Pro is an app that's already installed. So we wanna run this when a form is submitted, of course. Uh, the connection is made, so that is great. We can go to continue and now we have to select a form. And this is why I said that we should give it a name. It is called workshop form. And now it says we are waiting for the form submitted event. So now we should go back to that page and let's submit that form on the real page. So let's say I have a question about a workshop. Let's submit the form. And it says your submission have failed because of a server error. Let's go back to AutoKit. And for some reason it did came through. So we're having some problem in Elementor, which I'm gonna fix later, but at least the data is coming through. So that is great. Let's click on save. And now we need to add a new node. So let's get started with Google Sheets because I know most companies use Google Sheets. So I'm gonna click on the plus and that's already a, an app that's installed. So let's search for Google Sheet and there it is. And what we want then is we wanna add a new row to a specific sheet. We don't wanna create a spreadsheet all the time. We just wanna add a new row and then we have to add a connection, but we haven't connected it to Google Sheets yet. So let me just do that right now. But before I do that, let me just quickly go to my Google Drive and then let's make a Google Sheet, which we're gonna call workshop form management. So what's gonna happen soon is that we're gonna connect each form uh, input field to a column. And then we also wanna have a column where we can manage the status. So whether it's a new one coming in, uh, we need to talk about it. So let's type in add and then uh, drop down. And look at that, Google already has some presets these days. So let's do priority, that looks interesting. So now I'm also gonna add some columns for the other input fields which is name, email, type, and message. And I think we're ready to go now. Okay, so let's make that connection with our uh, Google Sheets. And don't worry here, it says sure triggers, but again, that is the same company. They just changed the name. Uh, so you can safely connect this. Make sure both checkboxes are checked. So now it's connected to my Google account, so let's continue. Okay, so now I should be able to find my workshop spreadsheet. Uh, there it is, workshop form management. That's the one I created. There's only one sheet in there. Here, that's this one here at the bottom. And now we can add that data here that we already fetched. So uh, if you type an add, then you can, the name should be this one. See, it's very easy to connect these fields. The email is this one and the other ones. Yeah, we don't need form ID and form name. So let's continue now and let's test the action. And it says action tested successfully. So let's go to our row. And yes, it did work, that is great. And it even duplicated that dropdown. So this way people can manage it, for example, like this, but it is one row too far to the right. So what went wrong? It starts at C2 and then it ends at F2. And I saw the updated range over here. So you can edit it and then say like, no, I wanna start at A2 and E2. And in this case, we have to already go to three. That's the where it's gonna start. Um, because the first two rows are already occupied now. So now it's gonna start from A3 and then E3. So let's click done editing and then test the action again. And now a new row should be added. Yes, perfectly like this. So now we already have a system that is a lot nicer uh, uh, than what you get from Elementor because you can just manage it like this in a Google Sheet. You can give everybody access this is already super cool, don't you agree? And by the way, you can just keep it like this because even if you test it again, it will just add a new row. So it works perfectly, very happy with this. 
but not everybody likes Google Sheets. So let's also try the Trello approach because that is easier for team management. People can comment. So let's also try it uh, plus and then uh, Trello. There are actually a lot more connections. It's very interesting to look through everything. I don't know, maybe your client uses Asana or uh, Monday, but Trello is free, so that's always nice. Uh, we need to create a new card for each submission. And then we also have to connect uh, Trello. So I just created a board in Trello. So here's just an example. Uh, new submissions will come in here. And then there's normal priority, critical, and then if you're done, you can move it here. A very easy system. Let's connect it up. So we're going to create a card. Uh, let's create a connection with Trello. And I just gave it access and now it is connected. So great. Apparently I'm called Reno 12. <laughs> okay. We're going to select the board, of course. And then we're going to put it in new. I just created this. It's already loading in. And now we're going to do the same stuff. We're just going to load in some data. So here you can decide a card name. So what I think I would do is I would do email and then I would just add a text before it. For example, submission and then the email. And because it's Trello, you can even assign it to a member. So let's say that someone in Trello is managing uh, these uh, things, then you can automatically put it on one person and then they can change it to another person if things get more complex. This is how it works in bigger companies where you have multiple tiers of support working on a thing. Uh, so you can even do that here. So that's why I think actually Trello is even better than Google Sheets for this. But hey, uh, do whatever you want, of course. Here, you just make sure that you have all of the fields so that it actually is going to show inside of that card. And uh, because it's Trello, you also have more things. You could even work with colors. And I would also suggest to put the new cards at the top. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Let's just uh, continue and test this. So now if we uh, click test action, we should have our first Trello card created. So some data came through. Uh, let's go to our Trello. And yes, there it is. Submission from Reno at Living Web Pixels. We open it. And here we have all of the features from Trello. So you can literally discuss with your team about uh, this specific thing. Uh, you can tag people. So yeah, Trello is just amazing, uh, especially what they offer for free. And of course, you can just move these cards to wherever you need it. So this is a very, very nice system. And so now we have this automated. It works. And so you may think that we are ready now, but we actually still need to publish this workflow. Then it will be live. So we did only testing things. Now it shows active. So now we can try again to fill out the form. Let's do someone else. Uh, sent. I'm still getting an error from Elementor, but that's because of SMTP. I just need to install their SMTP plugin. But let's go to Google Sheets. And yes, uh, it has worked. This new one has come in and we can mark it. And let's also go to Trello. And yes, we can see it here as well. Amazing. It works. Okay, I've now installed SiteMailer from Elementor to fix that SMTP issue. And it was successful and it's still coming through right here and in google sheets so everything works right now we can move on to the next step which is slack because what happens here uh, your company doesn't know about google she doesn't send you a notification and trello when there's a new card or a new row so this is the moment we're gonna add slack so let's do that uh, we're gonna send a message to a channel and then we need to connect it to slack so uh, make sure you are logged in with Slack. Now my Slack is connected. Uh, perfect. Continue. And uh, we're going to select a channel. Let's uh, do fun because this is just for fun. It's just a test for me. And then you can also uh, put all of the fields in here as we did before. I just gave the bot a name. Uh, let's continue and also test the action. So now it's going to send one of the messages to Slack. Uh, let's see. And uh, yes, it has worked. Tutorial bot one. And the message is here. So now somebody can do something with this. 
And I do want to say though that the Elementor form actually has a Slack integration also built in. So you could use this, but I wanted this tutorial to not only be about Elementor Pro, because I know not everybody is using the same form plugin. So if you create a new action and then search for form, uh, you can see all of them. And again, if you create a new workflow, you can also start with a webhook, which you can then put inside of your form and then also get the data through. So this is absolutely not just connected to Elementor. So now I have one active workflow and on the free plan I checked, you can actually do 20 workflows uh, and 250 tasks per month. And so from my understanding with our setup, it uses two tasks, but we have connected both of them. So you can already do quite a lot for the free plan, uh, but for businesses where this can save money uh, by replying quicker to potential clients or helping customers quick, this is of course quite affordable. Uh, their plans already start from $9 a month which is just a tiny subscription for most businesses. So my idea here is that you sell this service to clients. You can uh, hook them up with the free plan, just make an account per client. And then once they reach the limit, they can upgrade themselves and they can just put it on their card. And I do actually have a little discount code because I sent a message to this company saying like, hey, I see what you guys are doing. It looks great. Uh, I think this fits my style pretty well because it's not too technical, it's visual, uh, but it's still quite advanced. So do you have a discount code for me and my audience? And they said, sure. So the discount code that I got is Reno Special 20. I will also put it in the description, uh, including the link to the platform. And let me know what kind of automations you want to learn more from. I am personally very interested in the agents. I've been playing around with this. It's pretty cool. You can uh, connect a, a Google Doc with an SOP. So this unlocks a lot more things. So you could, for example, create an auto email reply system where it automatically creates drafts. Uh, this is where things become really, really powerful. So I'm still testing with this. Uh, let me know if you have great ideas. And then I hope that you enjoyed this uh, quite in-depth tutorial for a ticketing system with WordPress forms. Uh, thank you for watching and I hopefully will see you in the next one.